The more I delve into these exclusive cards that were never released outside of Japan, the more I become obsessed with them. Probably none more so than the Pokemon Fan Club promos. The Pokemon Fan Club was basically the very first iteration of what we would now call the Pokemon League, which was organized play for the TCG. It began in the late 90s, and you had to be a resident of Japan to even be a member. And it ran from 1999 until 2003 when it was shut down, and then revived as the Pokemon Player Club, which ran from 2003 to 2008 when it was closed and then revived as the Daisuke Club, which is still running today. One huge perk of being an original member of the Pokemon Fan Club is that you had access to these exclusive promo cards. Much like the current Pokemon League that many of you are probably familiar with, you accrue points for showing up to events, participating in tournaments, and sometimes being a part of some kind of promotion. In 1999, if you were a fan club member in Japan and you had accrued over 100 points, you were sent this jumbo card in the mail, which was really just a giant postcard. If you flip it around, you don't see the normal card stock back you would for a TCG card. Instead, you had this postcard that you could fill out and return. If you return the postcard, you would get an additional 10 points added to your account. And you'll notice a few unique things about this card. For one, at the top where it would normally say trainer, since this is a trainer format card, instead it says special card. It also has very unique artwork that never showed up on any other piece of promotional material. And the text on the card doesn't really list any kind of effect that it would have within the TCG. Instead, it just has instructions on what to do with the card, how to return it, and how many points you get for returning it. Starting in July of 99, members could receive this version of Tropical Present instead. If the artwork looks familiar to you, you will notice that it is part of the Southern Islands artwork. So if you haven't checked out my video on the Southern Islands sets, go ahead and do that. Everything else about the card remains the same other than the artwork, so again, you send it back and you get 10 additional points added to your account. Starting in early 2000, members of the fan club could receive this postcard in the mail, which was New Year's present, and I love this artwork, just Gyarados hyper-beaming you into the new year, and just the look of all of the other dragon-related Pokemon around the hyper-beam in their faces. As you'll notice, this one still has the special card format. It was still the jumbo oversized card that came as a postcard. If you look at the back though, you'll notice that with this card, if you returned it, you got 200 points instead of the 10 that you got with Tropical Present. In this photo, you have a regular size Pokemon card there for reference, just so you can see how big these present cards actually were. And it's just covering up the place that the address information would be. Starting in summer of 2000, members could receive this New Century present, which was still celebrating the year 2000, but this time you got this sweet Celebi artwork, which again is really fun. You get the Pokemon Fan Club logo down in the bottom right there, which is another unique attribute of these postcard TCG cards. Just like with the New Year's present card, you could return this one and get 200 points added to your fan club membership account. The final fan club postcard that was sent out was the third version of Tropical Present. And you'll notice a lot of differences with this one. It's not a special card. It's instead listed as a trainer, even though it's the exact same as Tropical Present. The fan club logo is on the left bottom of the card now, mainly to fit in with the new e-reader format that was added to the card. This postcard became available in July of 2001 when the Japanese TCG was switching over to this e-reader format. The biggest change between this and the two prior Tropical Presents was that to receive this one you needed to already have 200 points in your account. But like the other two versions, you could return this one to get 10 additional points. Like all of the other postcard jumbo size cards, this one features amazing artwork. I absolutely love this one. It's my favorite of the series. Ho-Oh is one of my favorite legendary Pokemon, and so just the fireworks and the mood that the artwork sets in this is incredible. The artwork alone is enough to make these cards highly sought after, but you also have to remember that these were technically postcards. They weren't really TCG cards, even though they were the same size as a normal jumbo card, but that makes these truly unique within the TCG and the collector's market. Also factor in that these were only available to members of a club that was exclusively in Japan, and the fact that they served as postcards 
means that most of these copies that are still existing have writing on the back. They would have been sent through the mail without any kind of protection on them, and when they were returned to the fan club, they were probably just thrown in the garbage after the points were awarded to the players. It's no wonder why these postcards are so rare. Finding one of these cards, period, would be difficult, but finding one that is crisp and doesn't have any writing on the back is probably next to impossible. Any copies I could find online of these cards were selling anywhere between $500 and $800. Aside from the cards that the fan club would send to members, members could also exchange their points for exclusive TCG cards. These were normal size TCG cards. They were legal in standard play, but you could only get them by exchanging points anytime between April 2000 and December 2002 before the fan club disappeared. By exchanging 500 player points, you could obtain the EV fan club promo. This card features exclusive artwork that was never used outside of this particular promo. It's kind of hard to tell from the card, but if you look at the background, you can see that you actually get these silhouettes of a blue, red, and yellow Eevee. Referencing each of its possible evolutions, you also get a unique set symbol there with the logo for the fan club with the points logo, which were called Get Points. The card itself was made available outside of Japan, although with alternate artwork. Wizards of the Coast released it as a Black Star promo that you could get during the June 2000 Pokemon League season. Because of the chain reaction Pokemon power, this card became a staple of any card that used evolutions pretty much from the point it was released all the way up through the Neo format. I actually prefer the Wizards of the Coast artwork, but that's just me. However, there is a big difference in rarity. The Wizards of the Coast promo, you can get one of these for about two bucks. However, the fan club one sells for a minimum of $500. Most of them go for at least $1,000. Uh, the most recent auction I could find for a PSA graded one was a Jim Mint EV that went for just under $1,800. In exchange for 600 points, you could get a copy of the Shining Magikarp fan club promo. Now, you may notice with this one, it looks exactly like the Neo Revelations release of Shiny Magikarp, as well as the set symbol. However, there is one small little difference that actually makes a huge difference. Pictured on the right is the Neo Revelations release, and if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see those three stars, which signify that this was a secret rare for that set. However, on the left, if you look at the fan club promo, there are no stars there because it wasn't really a secret rare. And this makes a difference of hundreds and hundreds of dollars in the value and rarity of the fan club promo. Shiny Magikarp did get an English release with the Neo Revelation set. However, its rarity symbol is only one star, which does make it different from the fan club promo and the Japanese release. Lastly, we have the fan club promo Porygon, which could be obtained by exchanging 700 get points. A really cool aspect of this artwork is that the background is actually the game corner. So you have a row of red slot machines and a row of blue slot machines in the background, which is really hard to notice unless you look really closely at the holographic part of the card. Aside from collector's value, this Porygon also had play value. If you look at the all clear attack, it ignores any kind of Pokemon power, and it discards all trainers in play as well as healing any Pokemon of special conditions. That made this a very disruptive card in the Neo format where Pokemon tools were heavily used, but there wasn't really a consistent way to get rid of them. By using All Clear, you could get rid of Gold Berries, Focus Bands, Counterattack Claws, cards like Brock's Protection, or any kind of Stadium card that you wanted to remove from play. It was like a soft reset of the game board to really just mess with your opponent and make it to where they weren't going to outpace you with setup, and anyone that's played this format knows that setup is probably the most important part of the Neo format game. Unlike Eevee and Shiny Magikarp, this Porygon never got an English release, and although it did cost more points to obtain within the fan club, its value is still a little bit less than that of Eevee. This one usually goes for somewhere around seven to $800. Which, don't get me wrong, that is a lot of money for a thin sheet of cardboard, but it really does speak to the rarity of all of the fan club promos. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope you learned a little something along the way. I absolutely love digging into this stuff and doing the research, so if there's a part of the TCG that you would like to know more about, or just more about the Pokemon franchise at all, let me know down in those comments. That's just more content for me to churn out. Stay tuned for more videos on some super rare 
cards that were never released outside of Japan, as well as some more decks coming up, some more TCG history videos. I've got a lot of stuff coming this summer that I'm really excited about. So until then, bye.